Laura, welcome to our ABE 205 um, main solution project. This is our final project, and yeah, we didn't do a very good job. So, <laughs> do you have trouble solving mazes? Have you gotten lost in a corn maze? Hi, Kevin Mays here with another amazing product, Mazy Solve. It's so easy, anyone can do it. Ready? All you do is select your maze, just click go, and Mazy Solve does the rest. But hold on, for an extra fee of only $9.99, you could also get the Mazy Solver picture capture. Just hold your picture up to your laptop's camera and let Mazy Solver do the rest. Yes, yes. But wait, there's more. And the Maisie Solver can be yours for just a low price of $19.95. But wait, there's more. For no additional fee, and we'll take off the shipping and handling, you can get the extra, what is it? Watershed transformation for the Maisie Solver. <laughs> just doing it again in case the first one didn't work. The watershed transformation <laughs> for the Maisie Solver. Our, Our program, program is Maisie Solve. Solve. I'm Kevin Crone. I'm Lucrezia. I'm Alex Burton. And I'm Lindsay Hennington. So my part of the programming was trying to take a video recording through the computer. So to record through MATLAB, you have to first use this webcam list to set up your camera properties on your computer. Now every computer has different properties. So Mac computers will be called Mac videos, while window computers will be called window videos. And then you also have your uh, scale of the frame. So you have also have to change that depending on what type of camera property you have. You also have to download the image processing add-on through MATLAB and also the video recorder add-on. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, so the first uh, part of the program, it clears all the data so we don't have any variables that mess with the program. Uh, then we find the video properties and we include that in our video input so we can have MATLAB uh, output our video. And then I set a trigger frames for how many frames we get, not really per second, but uh, you just have to have video frames per trigger equals one to view the video. And then we preview the video and have it pause after six seconds to take a photo so we can do the image processing of our maze after that. And then we get the snapshot and then we show our image and write it as a file. <coughs> okay, click. Show, um, so our GC is now stored as a variable for our image uh, that we took from the saved file and then we load it and get the average values for the grayscale. So each pixel will have a number from zero to one correlating how dark it is. And then we use that uh, level to change the image into binaries from zero to one. And then we show the binary image and we resize it. So most of our functions to solve the maze can actually solve the maze. And we also crop the image make it smaller. Quick. Um, the problems with using this method is that um, the mazes aren't pixelated. It's all jaggedy, it had jagged edges, and uh, some of the maze solving programs didn't actually work. Uh, yeah, jagged edger, edges. There's also border issues and uh, the camera's inverted, so that's kind of awkward. Quick. Uh, here's a preview of the image. <coughs> here's a preview of the image of a grayscale image on the back of my math test homework, or a math test. And so, click. Uh, we cropped the image and resized it, and converted these values into binary. Click. All right. So, um, me and Lucrezia ended up doing our part together since our code is so long. 
but we ended up doing a maze solver for the shortest path. So, and this is just a little like macro view of our code here because it's got a lot <laughs> in there. So we have our first if then statement with all these codes. We bring up the folder to have the predetermined mazes that we put in images. And we have a message that says continue with the number, makes the starting folder um, containing the maze images by name and read, gets the photo of the maze, and then we have another if-then statement that converts basically any color in the maze to monochrome and finds the standard deviation of each color. And then it finds the color channel with the highest contrast to transfer to a monochrome image. So in our code, we have red as the most, as the um, image with the highest contrast, is the color with the highest contrast, so we use that channel. Um, min, max value scales the image. Subplot displays the results of the image with color. And then it will end up showing a bunch of subplots like this with the original image, binary images with the walls are white instead of black, um, the labeled images which um, show the one with the highest contrast, and the one with the takes in shows the walls. Um, so continued about the code is we have an array which is labeled image numbers of walls which labels it and identifies separate walls. Um, another subplot, the, one of the graphs that I just showed you. Um, binary image takes the first label as the first wall. Um, subplot, subplotting another um, image of the main sol solution that I sh um, showed you with the binary image. Um, and then the cutscene will take over from here. <laughs> and after the dilation notch, which also could be changed if you want to, the image is filled, and then after that it's eroded, and um, the eroded part is set to zero to find the difference in between. And then uh, the, cover, the if number of bands equal to one, it just puts the red solution on top of the original image. Mm -hmm. And then if you want it in different colors like green or blue, you can change it just depending on like the number that you put there. So if you want to change it to green, you just make this zero and then that whatever number it needs to be and make that zero as well. And then afterwards, it shows your main image with the red outline as well, and then asks you if you want to change it, or it asks you if you want to do another maze to solve. Cooking. And then this is just the progression of it. So this is the dilation, and then that's when the holes are filled. And then the eroding, and then you can see that the difference equals to the solution, and then that solution will be in red, like the next image, onto your original maze. So my uh, part of the project was using the uh, water transformation to solve the mazes. The watershed transformation is basically um, a pre-downloaded code that I used and then I manipulated it thereafter. So I'm going to go through it step by step. And the first step is that I first run the watershed code after putting in the image. Um, basically what it first does is it takes two catchment basins and then this is taken because the watershed is usually used in reference to um, water flow through dams and stuff like that. So the first catchment basin is going to be where it starts and the second one is going to be where it ends. And as you can see the difference between the two is the gray and the white. And the border between the two, the black, is the solution. So then the next part of what I do is that I take this image and then basically I just get rid of all the parts that we don't need, leaving just the part of the maze of interest. And then the next part is that I will then subtract the two images and then this will result in this picture. And then to make it more clear what the path is, I made the um, path green. And then next I um, use the image overlay function, which I'll show later, and it basically just a turns it red, and then B it takes the two images of the original maze and the solution and it overlays them. And then the code. We can just. How do I get it? Hit the mouse. Just click it. In the middle. Yeah, there it's up. Oh, you just put it down. So this is the uh, watershed code, and what it first does is it takes the watershed of the maze, the input that you put in, 
and then here is the subtraction of the two to get the um, original. Oh, I messed that up. I'm just going to start over. Okay. So this is the code of the watershed. First off, it takes the watershed of the maze of which you can input using the image file saved on your computer. And then next it shows the image. And then I ba basically what it does, this part sets them equal to each other. And then this is when it gets rid of the um, part of the maze that isn't used in the solution. And then I take that image and then I watershed it again and then show that image and then that shows the, uh, the green line. And then what I do next is I subtract those two images and then do the image overlay and that's the solution. At the end. Whatever. That's all folks. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs>